makes it is spongy. So you have, you know, more open spaces, more green spaces. So the water is retained by earth and water is retained by tree. That could be option. And this is Chandigarh master plan, which took cognizance of rainwater itself. The Cho, which was there, you can see right in the, you know, this is a seasonal uh, water channel. They never, you know, used it for urbanization. So entire park, everything, this is from 100 meter to 300 meter, all across the city, you can see this is the Leiche Rally. This is what the, the most beautiful part, which has been doubled by this. And what they have done, you know, all rain water, which is coming in, that is being, you know, drained off. But unfortunately, they are also, you know, they are a draining of the water. They are not retaining the water, but nevertheless, this is a green area where they are able to do water management, but it has been a made integral part. And you can see the green spaces which are provided. They provide enough scope for water management. Look at this. Along the roads, you know, you have a lot of water coming in, but they are all basically flooding the roads. But if you have a green area, surely that water can be retained as part of this. This is again a Chandigarh lake, you know. You can see this is an artificial lake, which were never existent, you know. So this artificial lake has been created, which is now has done great job. Not only, you know, change the environment of Chandigarh, which was very, very harsh, you know. This has been become the best tourist attraction, plus it has helped in recharging the groundwater. So you have all the water which coming in the Sukhna Chow from the Shivalik range of it has been done. This is what I was trying to say, the Leisure Valley. This is around going across the city. This is around eight to 10, nine kilometers long, you know, and this has all been planned and developed to have a green spaces. This is a round boat, which is our known, Chandigarh is known for green, you know, this. And these are one which can absorb a lot of water. But I always say, if you can raise the level of this green by this uh, round boat, you can have, you know, basement, uh, where the water can be stored and the water which is required for irrigating that is available right you know all rainwater can be harvested and can be used for this and you can minimize the you know burden on the fresh water itself you know so they are the options you know subsequently becomes the green uh, you know area so open spaces remain very very important india has only 2.9 square meter per person available whereas it is nine square meter is the option so if you have nine square meter available, I think it will be better job, you know. And then there are seven trees per person, which is required for, you know, your oxygen, for also for your cooling the city and also, you know, retaining water. Trees are great absorber water. They are not, uh, they, they absorb heat. They also absorb water, you know. And the option, other option as part of the planning could be, you can have green terraces, you know. And then you have all those, uh, you know, those by area biodiversity channels etc and you can create a city forest which is an idea where in the forest you don't need an acre you know even 100 square yard you will have mayawaki you know those forests you know, which have lot of uh, your capacity to absorb water and chandigarh what they did you know when they came up all the protected tree all the trees were declared to be protected tree that nobody could ever you know chop off a tree and that is still, uh, that law is still available. And that's what Chandigarh remained very green because no tree which was existing at the time of acquisition of land was allowed to cut down. So this is, you can see the kind of thing. Bombay has only one square meter per person against nine square meter. Bangalore has only two square meter against nine square meter. And you can see the kind of thing. And we have only 28 trees available per person as against world average of 422 trees. Look at this Canada. They have 10,163 trees available per person as against India. And we can see what is the situation. And this is what Kiyurikeba has defined, redefined the city. And we're against the nine scale. Earlier it was only two scale kilometer, two scale meter, which were available. But by planning itself, that gentleman, you know, uh, Jimmy Lerner, who was an architect, he redesigned the city. And now you have it you know, one of the finest city. And I think this is a city which needs to be studied in terms of contribution to the planning and development because this is the city which gave the idea of BRTS, you know, bus based rapid transit system. This also gave the, you know, idea of pedestrianization. This also 
gave the idea of transit oriented development and he was the man who gave the idea that let the you know waste be uh, exchanged for food coupons so that people you don't have to go to collect let people come and you know deposit at the places and they were able to manage this you know so this is what you know this is central park this is city forest you know so ultimately you know uh, we, we see that we agriculture of course that remains an area where they we have to make aware the farmer the role and importance of water and the availability of water and said the way punjab is consuming water punjab is going to in 30 days a desert you know i think that's what this needs to be communicated that we have to go shift from you know inefficient agriculture to an efficient agriculture let me also explain to you the role of built environment you know that remains very very important i think we all know the policies of five r's you know reduce recycle reuse recharge and refuse itself you know so ultimately you know this is what is available with us that you have rainwater harvesting you have you know labeled these sanitation uh, for which consume less water and then agriculture but uh, this uh, landscaping etc but please understand the to water the built environment the building consume one sixth of the total water which is consumed on this planet earth so that means building sector remains or construction sector remains highly water intensive and that's what we have to focus on this we have to make sure you know that in this that we graduate from our technology which are present on site to the off site so that water consumption remains very very less you know and secondly the entire sanitation system or plumbing system is based on water you know can we if we are going for water zero water urinal can technology help us tomorrow to become zero water wc itself so that will be remaining you know that's a challenge which we need to say but now the plumbing association has agreed that all plumbing fixture will be labeled they will be starred you know so that it should be made mandatory that because they are the one which are uh, you know responsible for large consumption of water if they are right in the beginning as you know uh, labeled and star and they should be asked to be mandatory to make star you know that they can help you know of course we are talking of stp there is a phytoremediation and any uh, another kind of you know as we are sewage treatment where you don't need to put up a sewage treatment plant you are, there are only plants which you know degenerate all the you buy uh, this dissect the all your organic things and then you get a fresh water at least if it can it is not uh, i know it's not possible in the city but at least in the societies you know it could be made uh, applicable and that will do a great job you know so ultimately uh, you know strategies for water at the uh you know say uh, this year. in a building level could be slow the flow we have to break the water and then of course you know we can have a dual plumbing system to check this water so they are the you know water efficient system and this is what i was talking about the building is sector you know which remain highly water inefficient and which consume lot of water you know so we can go for a green building we all know we can reduce the water consumption to the level of 40% we need to architects need to ensure the entire building is not covered with built up area you know and you know you have lesser footprints that means ground coverage is reduced so that means what will happen you will have larger chunk of open spaces which will be using for consumption which can you know absorb water and which will there so that is where why the cities are getting flooded for the simple reason we are covering all this uh, plot area we are making city impervious the water immediately rest out and you know a water when it pour, falls on a earth itself and water when it is on a uh, you know metal space it is three and half times faster than this so no system of water drainage can you know take care of the flooding system and that's what the cities are flooded so if we are asking people by bylaws itself that you have reduced footprint of building leave more spaces you will find things will be much better and this is what we you know we are talking of prefabrication prefabrication is known for distinct advantages the moment this is there because this is all all you don't do on site you do off site you know so you reduce lot of water all watering of you know bricks etc that's not at all involved here so this is 
you reduce a lot of water consumption because all building components are manufactured in the industry and industry you can uh, come understand you know all curing is done in the same water and the water is used and reused so if we you know change our construction technology go from on site to off site you'll find this will become more important look at chandigarh you know how they made use of this water as a, as a thing look at this this is a this is the security uh, this is assembly of chandigarh so look at this if the, if the water is to be drained and it is to be taken out how much expensive it would be what they have done you know the entire rain water they have put two you know this water bodies on right side and left and then all the rain water the, you have a gargoyle they are coming here and they are being stored you know so you are retaining water you are cooling this and you are giving a new dimension to the architecture in singapore this is a new law they say that we cannot allow this entire singapore to be metal it's enough is enough so what they have done a bylaws you know bylaws is what you know that whatever plot is allotted you need a construction you need a housing and what the law is you know that you whatever footprints of the building suppose you have a 1000 square yard plot you have been allowed to cover 400 square yard that means you are taken 400 square yard out of the green area so this is they don't they have said we will not allow the further reduction of the green area so this 400 square yard which is a green you know footprint this will have to be compensated within the building at any floor so you can see people are having green roofs people are having those green areas within created within the building otherwise you will not be allowed to you, your building will not be sanctioned you will not be allowed to construct it you will not be allowed to occupy if you don't do it this you know then you can see how the building topology are saying i think they can do a great service they can do retain a lot of water you know and they can make the building cool and also the air conditioning load will go down this new typology of building green roof of course remains very very important you are not only retaining water but you are also reducing the heat and it creates a win win situation for the people who are living there particularly on the top floor itself you know. so this is what we are saying that was uh, you know i said that we have to change our build uh, tech, uh, typology that's we go with the we have to make the construction sector more empower you know more relevant and more rational so that they consume less energy so look at this you know their innovation which has been done in lay they they there were a lot of water shortage and this is how they are able to meet this water shortage what has happened during the winter they you know they saw that there was in all the water bodies there was snow on the top but below the water was available what they did you know that is that's what has been done uh, by you Uh, the gentleman who was uh, who was the you know inspirator for three idiot uh, this and he what he invented ultimately what they did you know they laid down a pipe they laid down a pipe from the water body to the other area so water bodies uh, the with this the water was flowing through gravity so once they were throwing gravity the external temperature was so low you know the moment water was coming out and gushing out and water was freezing so this you know water stupa has been now created in the lay and this makes available to you the water during summer number one now that you don't have to transport water the much water is also available for agriculture itself so the entire economy entire environment availability of water you know that has all been utilized only by the innovation itself of course when you go to singapore now they were earlier doing what you know they were doing they were trying to you know have uh, they were importing water from the uh, this uh, malaysia but now they they found you know this water is of course becoming very very expensive so what they have done now they are treating the sewerage water so when you go to singapore you find a new water please look at this this is not a water which is from brought outside you know this is a sewerage water which has been treated and which is being made use of this for you know making water for drinking purposes so this is what they do it collection they you know then they undergo treatment and in in treatment there are you know there are so tough standards adopted that this water has the quality of a drinking water you know of course this is what delhi is also trying to say 
that they want treat water to be collected, then microfiltration, reverse osmosis, disinfection, and the pure water will come out, you know. So this is, uh, evaporation again remains one of the major, you know, loss of water, wherever the, of course, which can be seen at the area which are very hot and the water availability is near, but you can look at this, that you can at least put those, you know, solar panel, they will go on generating electricity, but they will also, you know, providing, they, they are also ev avoiding evaporation and water loss. This is in Punjab, what has been done. This is 1.1 kilometer long. You know, this is over the canal. They have put this, this photovoltaic cell. What has been done, you know, photovoltaic cell, after they are heated up to a certain degree, they reduce efficiency, you know, and they, uh, they generate less, uh, uh, you know, those uh, heat, uh, energy, etc. So this, uh, this uh, you don't need a land in this case. So land, this is exactly on the water. Below this is a canal, and canal is flowing, and you don't need, number one, no land. Number two, you know, the water vapor comes in, this go on cooling this uh, photovoltaic cell, and the efficiency of the water cell, uh, this photovoltaic cell is maintained. Thirdly, because of those you know, you have those dust, etc. They all gathered there that you can have water from the canal lids and, you know, you can clean it. So this is one of the, you know, area where they are saving water from evaporation. Secondly, they are improving the efficiency of photovoltaic cells. And thirdly, you know, they are not utilizing any kind of land. So we will, I'll conclude at this note that Water remains critical. Its protection, management, and restoration uh, remains fundamental. And, uh, and uh, let's be very clear, you know, if uh, the, the problem of biodiversity, pollution, and climate change can be attributed to the, the way the water is being handled, you know. But we, I think we, this what can, comes to the conclusion. The water has to be valued, conserved, preserved, and protected, both in quantity and quality. We have to declare water as a national resource and it has to go in a central list. We have, should have a national policy on the water management itself, you know, and we should not have this kind of fundamental right that you have right to own a property, right to speak, etc. I think right to portable, access to portable water should be accepted as one of the fundamental rights which needs to be provided. Of course, the government is doing the good. Then we have to integrate the water management, both of urban and rural areas, and ultimately, you know, we have to reduce the consumption of water using technology. Of course, till we don't make the agriculture very efficient, you know, we don't make the industry efficient, we don't look at the, you know, the construction sector very critically and objectively, it will be very, very difficult. I think Chandigarh example needs to be studied in terms of how they were using the low-lying area for creating a lake, you know, how, how they have been tackling the rainwater harvesting, how the buildings are being designed, and the how, you know, the trees are being protected, you know. But I think, uh, nevertheless, there are still a lot of options. There are still, you know, a lot of opportunities that water, uh, uh, that water still needs to be valued, preserved. I think it's a uh, problem of fairness, or the communities and the stakeholders, they all need to be brought at one platform to look at this. But I can only conclude this, that water problem is basically has genesis in the human beings, and it is the human beings which can offer the solution. You don't have to go outside, you know. So the, more, the day the human beings understand the total context, you know, of the water, and they are involved in this, you'll find this world will be a much better place. Thank you.